This is all the wiring I took out of that bus. Whole box full. It took a while. When I started, there was grass on the ground. Now we've got snow everywhere. Uh, I didn't work eight hours a day solidly. I kind of piecemealed it when I had time here and there, but it'd take a while. So, video's long. Uh, sorry about that, best I can, but hopefully, if you're doing any wiring or kind of interested in the process, sort of check it out. Thanks for watching. Hey, welcome back. Uh, it's Ted here, uh, looking on the bus today. Made a mistake yesterday, kind of. Well, not a huge mistake, but one of those things where I came out and it was too cold to really paint anything or put caulking. I was hoping to start doing windows, but it was just kind of cold, so kind of wandered around a bit aimlessly going, what project am I going to do next? And so then I started looking at the wiring. And I started stripping out wiring, but I didn't really film any of it because I wasn't really planning on doing much. <laughs> but I got caught up in it. So I'll kind of show you what I did. Figured we'd start uh, with the flashes on the back of the school bus here, kind of up in here. And so I disconnected these wires and then started tracing them through here, uh, this big cable. And you'd get to these connectors, you know, kind of shrink wrap things. I would cut those out carefully with a X-Acto knife so I didn't cut the wires. And just kept tracing them back all the way through here. Things started getting tricky in here where you get sort of this conglomeration of wires and they would drop down through there. So here we are with the electrical panel. I did uh, disconnect my battery so I didn't have to worry about uh, shorting anything. But traced the wires down through here and then found um, the wiring harness where it was connected to and I labeled it right there. And then uh, that was it. After I had uh, after I had uh, disconnected everything, I went back and started the bus just to make sure that any of the alarm systems uh, weren't continuing going off or the bus would continue to start, so I could set it back up. And so that seemed to work pretty well. Uh, I did the flasher lights, top and the bottom of the bus, and then I did the um, speaker wires, and which is odd actually. The uh, the school bus light sign was on the same harness as the speaker wire, so that was kind of strange. And then actually in one of the wires from uh, the bus lights actually had gone over to the automatic door. You know, you can put the, or the yellow lights on and then when you flip, when you open the door, it goes to the red light. So I had to snip that wire off, um, but everything seemed to be running still fine. And so now I'm going to continue to work on the overhead lights and pull those wires because uh, I don't think I'm going to keep that circuit or I'm going to rewire it if I do anyway. <laughs> these light wires from the cabin cabin lights so we've got these out um, but I haven't disconnected this red or pinkish wire or this brown one so I have to trace back and find out where these are going I'm gonna guess this is some sort of power lead but I don't know I probably should go back and check it before we start yanking stuff out it also goes down to this wiring harness right here it looks like there's a bunch of other wires here and I'm going to guess, actually, these look like the colors that went to the tail lights and to the, uh, you know, the brake lights and the blinker. So I can't really cut those either. So I'm going to trace back these wires, see if I can find them. All right, we've traced this pink wire back to here. And I can see that it goes into here in this mess, but it doesn't come out here. So it goes through there, must drop down. And looks like it comes out right here which was the emergency alarm for this back door. So I have to decide whether I want to keep this alarm or not. Uh, I suppose safety wise it's not a bad idea to have the door alarm but then again I'm not sure if it's worth the hassle of having to try to figure out all the wire and rewire it so um, we'll have to make some decisions on that. 
to trace the brown wire coming from that uh, coming from that harness, and turns out it looks like that's the brake light tail light power lead. So that would probably be a bad idea to cut that one. So I tried to decide whether I should cut all the light, you know, the regular light wires, and leave the harness in for, like I said, the emergency alarm and for the brake lights. Okay, so like I said, I've, these are the cabin light wires. These uh, ones here actually go to the rear lights in the back, the brake lights and the blinkers and things like that. So I'm gonna cut these four out so I can get them out of there and then cap them off and then I'm gonna see if I can take this harness from the, that were the flashers and trace them back in the panel and see if I can get those out as well. One, two, three, four. Probably a smart idea to label these too while I'm at it, but I'll get to that in a minute. All right, so this is the wiring harness again to the stop light flashers, and looks like they're all sort of put together here with connectors, which can go through to this fuse panel right there. So I think I'm going to disconnect the five wires that I can identify through there and then I'm going to start the bus to make sure that everything starts right and check all the other lights to make sure that uh, everything works before I continue. Alright, unplugged the lights from this panel, snaked them through here. I had to clip these off here. These are the wires that look like they go up under through here and up to the switches. So I'm gonna go find the switch now and see if I can pull it from there. All right, here's the uh, flasher panel. So I should label all those wires there, unhook the harnesses, and trace them down through. All right, still plugging away on the electrical here on the bus, so over here, we are, let's go down there a little bit, trying to deal with this mess of the panel here, making decent progress, so I'll show you my system. But a lot of these uh, circuits, not gonna really use like the, uh, you know, the overhead lights, I'm gonna wire into like a battery bank and a 12 volt system and not tie it into the engine directly. So uh, I might as well take it all out here and then I can sort of reinstall it uh, somewhere else. Well, I think I might reuse the switches anyway. So, um, but it's a bit tricky. And it's kind of terrifying in some ways because <clears throat> you know I'm paranoid about you know, really getting lost in that map of wires. And, and in case you take out something you really need, and you're going to be able to put it back. So, uh, I've been working on the system of trying to keep myself organized. So, um, so this is what we're doing. So, I'm do these switches and the plugs in the back. Got these little tabs right here, but I'm finding that. You squeeze one side, and the other side squeezes closed. So, kind of had to use a screwdriver to get in there and try to pry it out without breaking it. Like I said, I may reuse these switches in the cabin of the bus later on. So my other organizational system I'm trying to do is label everything. It's a little driver seat, so either Down to the fuse panel. 
So what I've been finding with these switches is that the the black wire is uh, power that runs into the breaker buses here that I popped off a little bit so I can get in behind. And then the gray wire goes into wiring harness down here. And the blue, I believe, is a power light uh, where the power for the little light that goes on the switch, you can see it at nighttime. And it goes into these, um, what I'm assuming is a different voltage, a lower voltage um, breaker or bus bar. And then uh, the white goes on the ground. So what I've been doing is tracing them all the way through to the end, um, cutting them and labeling them immediately and pulling them up bit by bit. So hopefully it's keeping me organized. tracking down the problem with the uh, with windshield wipers to prove to be more complicated uh, and very simple at the same time so uh, let me show you it took me actually a couple of weeks um, just plugging away here 20 minutes here 20 minutes there it's been pretty busy um, so let me show you what we did so I looked at the wiring diagram and found out that this is the power line here uh, unplugged at this harness and checked it with my uh, multimeter and saw I was getting no power here even with the uh, with the ignition switch on so we traced it down through all that mess of wires down there continue to trace the wires down into this bus which was kind of a pain in the neck because I had to unbolt them to kind of see what was behind there uh, and realized it came into this bus here and which is being fed by this cable here which ran up into these solenoids um, so we tested these with a uh, multimeter as well, my solenoids. So I tested the solenoids by uh, once again getting out the multimeter, setting it for 20 volts. And then uh, touch this to the ground, stud here, and then looked at the incoming supply over here uh, with the accessory switch on. And we're getting about 14, 14, I don't know, 12 volts. 12 volts there. But also with the accessory switch on. So then, still get the black of the ground. Go to the control circuit. I'm getting nothing. So power isn't coming into that control circuit to trip it. Turn that up. So in order, the next step was to trace the control lines all the way through this mess. And one of them goes all the way from this one up back into the heater switch this way. Uh, the other one actually goes to a pole here. And this goes all the way back into the uh, emergency exit alarms. And the other one snakes up, goes up down through here, all the way down through there, and then back up into... It looks like heading back toward the ignition accessories. So I guess before we do that, the other thing I wanted to do is I wanted to check to make sure uh, that it wasn't uh, the solenoid. So I took my alligator clips here, clipped one end on to uh, 
over here where I know I'm getting power on the inside. Come on, get on there. So I'm jumping from this power and then onto the control circuit here. And we're getting power. So the solenoid is good. It's just got to figure out what's going on with that circuit, with the control circuit. So then we traced that control circuit to here, all the way down there to the left of the driver's seat. Up and through this mess all in here and across to the ignition switch. Trying to figure out what possibly could have gone wrong. When lo and behold, I discovered this is a fuse panel right here. Popped off this fuse panel, started pulling out all the individual fuses and found that um, this one right here was blown. And I replaced that and everything works. Happy day. Okay, so we're pretty much finishing up really sort of the deconstruction of the wiring. I've taken pretty much everything out uh, that I really wanted to that I know of so far. So um, all the light flashes had come into here and I got that panel out. The solenoids that ran, uh, all the air powered stop signs and that's out. Uh, I have clipped the wires that I need to. I still need to cap those off with the wiring harnesses. Um, I labeled each one of these. These are the ground uh, wires to the lights on the switches so you can see them at night. So I labeled all those. And these are the power leads up there, which I kind of did the same thing. Well, I did the same thing. Um, labeled them all. Most of the switches came down, so there's a power lead that went into one of these buses. Uh, and I uh, labeled them on here. Um, so they know which way they are in case they need to put them back. Uh, so the power lead came into here. We had um, whatever the accessory or the wire that can kind of control the actual device went in these wiring harnesses. And, and that was it. So I took them one piece at a time, labeled them, and everything seems to be uh, functional so well, so far. All right, so one of the last, I don't know if I can ever say last, uh, but I think I'm getting pretty close to finishing up the wiring. I'm starting to sort of put things back together uh, a little bit just to make sure that they work. Uh, so for example, the context of the problem over here, uh, we've got this kind of mess of wires and I, I need to start thinking about how I want to reconfigure this console. Obviously I don't need, you know, I don't need all the flasher lights so I, you know, I can reroute or sort of relocate those uh, windshield wiper switches. And so we're going to consolidate all of them into one panel, one bay, I guess. So I have to sort of figure out how I'm going to do that. So uh, I started hooking things back up to make sure that they work. So I've got the, uh, I got the heaters, uh, the fans are blowing. Uh, so far I think everything is working except for this fan right there. So I want to figure out what's going on with that. So I'd actually taken it off and hung it up here just kind of to get out of the way for a bit. Um, but I thought maybe it's not working. And uh, so I got to put it, uh, I hooked it back up in case it needs to be grounded. And so let's trace these wires. I'm pretty confident we can figure it out because I figured out everything else. So let's kind of see what's going on. These wires, I've got these numbers. I got a pink and an orange wire. Got a pink and an orange wire, a pink and an orange wire that we gotta trace back to. I'm pretty sure those are all going right back down there. Okay. Okay. I didn't really want to bore you with uh, tracing all the wires, but I did find uh, here are the wires here that come down into this wiring harness, and the uh, wires go up through here and up to the switch. And the switch power wire comes down to right here. So the challenge is to find out whether I'm getting power to that or not. So let's, uh, let's turn the bus on and test it. All right, I got my test light here, so I'm gonna hook this up to the ground. Right there, and then we're going to test 
power right here. No power. This one. All right, so no power to any of this bus. How about over here? Yeah, we're getting power over there. So we need power to go from here, from this solenoid over here, over there. I wonder. If I remember correctly, the heater master switch needs to be flipped in order to run power over to this. I think most of the this bus over on this side, right there, those are all the heater elements. So let's go turn on the heater master switch and see if that works. Fan's not running right now. Uh, let's see. Heater master. Fan. And, aha, victory. All right, so I think it's time to wrap up the wiring video. Uh, it's going to be messy, I can already tell, so I'm going to put this together. I apologize in advance. Uh, this wiring has, uh, playing without it even so far, has literally taken me months. Uh, not that I've worked on it every single day. And I know some people like to work on one project, you know, start and then do the whole thing and then move on to other things. But I find it hard to work that way based on weather and time. And, you know, sometimes you need a whole day for a certain project and other ones can be piecemeal. And so I attack this one piecemeal. And so I guess what I would say is that uh, take it, for me, I had to take it slow. Uh, I did a pretty good job um, labeling things as I went. There's a couple things I found on the like, geez, I should have labeled that. Uh, luckily, it hasn't come back to bite me. The most important things are always working. But, um, you know, disconnect it, start the bus, check everything, make sure it works, pull everything back. I know I said this a hundred times, but I think it really bears, uh, really bears um, noting. And uh, so, again, one circuit at a time, one connection at a time, label. And uh, I did find that I got better and better as I went on. I was going to realize, okay, this circuit's going to go here. And again, even that last fan problem at this point, I kind of knew the wire is going to go into the power bus. They're going to, uh, I know the fan had to be grounded to the chassis, which it was. And then the switch is going on. So I just had to figure out where the power was and much easier um, troubleshooting that than, for example, though, you know, the... Uh, the windshield wiper issue or things like that so um again i apologize for the kind of the messy process is kind of what it is i definitely learned a lot uh as i went through so i appreciate you watching uh thanks a lot uh, appreciate the support uh hit me up with any comments give me suggestions i'm still learning as i go and i really look forward to seeing you in the next video thanks a lot bye